good afternoon. I broke my sunglasses. This is my bicycle company I've done nothing with. <laughs> had this bicycle company for like five years. Anyway, we made like a couple prototypes. They're very nice, you know, handmade bicycles, but then the pandemic shut down our factory. So we were like, nah, whatever, but we have a trademark. So if anyone wants to buy a bicycle company where we made three bicycles. <laughs> so anyway, that said, I'm heading to Phoenix and it's gonna be hot tonight. So I just was gonna like stay in Prescott and I was like, oh, I'll just go back to the library. But they had a big bicycle race today, apparently. Um, so there's no parking on the street of the library and I couldn't find another library that I really cared to bother to go to. So instead I am uh, behind this car that keeps weaving back and forth between lanes. I'm like, you're never gonna be in the quick lane. Like just stay in your lane. Can I get a blue sky? No, it's overcast. Anyway, so yeah, it, the storm's coming in. So I figured I'll get down to Phoenix. It's gonna be in the 60s tonight. Nobody signals here. Arizona, do you not signal? Like I would like for somebody to use their indicator it's like, what is that meme? It says like, um, me, you know, just, just, you never, you know, be nice to everyone. You never know what they're, what they're going through. And then also me. Yeah. Nice turn signal, fuckface. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not really like that. Sometimes I'll get like ornery Scorpio, like when you have to, but I'm Texan kind of. So you don't, you don't use your turn signal or you don't uh, flip people off or beep when you're in Texas because, um, you'll get shot. <laughs> so, and I don't own a gun. So there you go. I have no way to defend myself if I flip somebody off and they decide to shoot me. So anyway, but Arizona people, you do not use indicators here. You just, you're like, I know it's a great expanse of desert, but there are actual roads with lines on it. We're not just driving, you know, over the, you know, free for all. Anyway, so yeah, it's got about an hour and 42 minute drive. I'm gonna be parked up at Cracker Barrel tonight. I was gonna go find some BLM land, but I'm like not really into finding that. I'm just like, I just wanna stay in town. Tomorrow I've got two hikes. I'm gonna to try to do two hikes. No more bike riding on this trip, I'm done. So I'm done until I go get my mountain bike from Albuquerque. That was treacherous you saw in the last episode. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be great just to kind of mosey on back through Texas. I've done so much this week. I can't believe I just flew into Vegas on Monday and I've already completed like everything I wanted to do. I am a day ahead, which is good. Um, but anyway, so I am just going to, yeah, just kind of uh, do two hikes tomorrow. Um, so that'll be fun. And then I have, um, Musical Instrument Museum on Sunday and maybe see what other stuff is open on a Sunday. I kind of just need a museum day. I try to do at least one museum day during each leg of my trip. My legs are usually two weeks or three weeks long uh, right now until things change. Hopefully in June, you know, there'll be a little bit of change in schedule, um, meaning that I'll be home a little bit more, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but generally I try to do like a kind of a rest day and the rest day will be something like sightseeing or um, doing a touristy thing in town or kind of checking out museums. But the Musical Instrument Museum I went to in 2021 and it's my favorite museum. And I got really teary eyed because the whole world is shut down and music is such a big part of my travel. It brings people together and then you basically get a headset for $20. You get a headset, you walk around this museum and they have instruments and displays for every single country. And the music will change as you get to each, uh, each exhibit. And it's really, really cool. And there's videos and things, it's real interactive. Of course, the American one was all like jazz and like marching bands and stuff like that. Um, but it was really, really sweet because music's always been a little bit of my, you know, actually a lot of my life, like living with people in other countries and doing homestays. So um, anyway, so I'm about 80 miles from Phoenix. I've been to Phoenix a bunch of times. I was here in 2021 as well and did a really, really good bike ride, but I'm done bike riding. <laughs> so that was treacherous. Um, but I think I'll do two hikes tomorrow up in the Superstition Mountains, uh, kind of get that out of the way. And then I, I'm back at the Cracker Barrel tomorrow night in Phoenix. Hopefully it's not gonna be too hot tonight. Hopefully it'll be in the 60s at least. I can run the fan. And then uh, finally, you know, head from uh, Phoenix to Albuquerque Monday morning. So I might go run at the gym. Monday morning. It's just a driving day on Monday to go to Albuquerque and get my bike. Um, and then I think either I'll work out in the morning or I think what I'll do is I'll go super early from Phoenix, drive the couple hours to Albuquerque and then do the Bosque Trail on my rollerblades again if the weather's good. I know it's starting to get hot in Albuquerque as well. Um, I was thinking of going up to uh, Santa Fe with the you know new and improved mountain bike um, and go do La Tierra trails but again it's like kind of done mountain biking right now. Um, but I do want to go, uh, yeah, I do, I do want to do a couple things. I've done everything in Albuquerque. I've done the Sandia Peak, I've done the tram, I've done the, um, you know, all the museums, everything. And I just usually go there and just ride the Bosque Trail and just kind of park up. And the Cracker Barrel there is really, really nice. So yeah, just doing Cracker Barrels until I get to San Antonio, then I'll be there, I think, for two days, maybe three days, two nights. My friend's working out there. Um, so the hotel, 
they're staying at is in downtown in the Riverwalk, but there's no parking at the hotel, so I've got to park like behind the Denny's. So I'll figure it out, but yeah, that's kind of it. I'll just mosey on around San Antonio during the daytime while they're working at the convention, and then in the evening we'll all go out, and then um, I'll just, you know, work on my computer and get some work done, and that kind of thing. I've always got work to do now because I've got the uh, nonprofit to work on, which is fantastic. And thank you for those that have donated. Uh, put it all away. I can't touch it. Don't worry. You're not just like funding my gas tank. I just want to be clear. That money is not for me to touch. That money is going to be put toward shit shovels and, <laughs> you know, backpacks and sleeping bags and hiking boots and whatever else anybody needs, you know, that are, um, you know, the, the trying to overcome trauma or maybe they're domestic violence survivors or they're service-connected disabled veterans and they just don't have the means to buy the equipment they need. So, no, you're not just like putting money in my bank yet like let me let me tell you that so um yeah <laughs> so um not that anyone's ever asked but no one said like oh you made a non-profit so you could fund your van life no this is completely separate this is my travel llc this is a whole different business this whole thing my van is an llc everything's a write-off so um yes uh if you have an instagram account or anything register your van as your company van and then therefore you know you just write everything off but i'm really excited to start getting projects going and I've got a Houston Small Business Expo coming up in May, which I'll go to and I'll hand out my business card and my stickers and hopefully get some corporate donations because we really want to get a lot of a lot of fundraising done so that we're able to, to do a lot more for people that, you know, are just kind of hurting. Like they just want to get out into nature, but they just don't have, you know, the, the means to buy an ultralight, you know, camping gear or a, the, the right pair of shoes that will help their spine disability. Um, so anyway, so, all right, so yeah, let me just keep on going and I'll see you when I'm in Phoenix, in Phoenix. Um, yeah, um, okay, cool. Hopefully it's not going to be a thousand degrees. I'm about 40 miles from Phoenix. People do not know how to drive here. Even on the freeway, it said, um, using your turn signals is a slam dunk and will save lives. I do not understand. There's construction back there. And everyone was like, the one guy was like weaving over three lanes, like to not let anybody merge. I'm like, and then all of the, after all that, he ends up like running to the red light. It's like ridiculous. So he's sitting there like filming me right now, like an asshole with his son. So anyway, but yeah, so it's just pathetic. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Maybe it's just too much like their brains are fried here. I don't know. As being in Phoenix, they've always just been like the worst drivers. I mean, it's like they're. I mean, I, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go now to the Martin Automotive Museum. I just saw this on the freeway. I know nothing about it. Let me get some uh, sun there. I know nothing about it, but um, it's right here. And uh, it's 80 degrees right now, and I don't feel like sitting in my van for the rest of the afternoon. So I'm going to go over here and just go to this uh, little automotive museum and see what this is about. So it closes in about an hour, so that'll give me time to... Uh, That'll give me time to look around for a little bit and get some air conditioning. But yeah, I don't get it. I mean, what, what purpose do you have as a road rager? Like if you're just gonna like, I mean, what, what, what do you get out of it? Like, I just don't understand. I mean, I flew through a windshield pretty much when I was 16 and we got in a really bad crash. We were hit by a 19 year old reckless driver and it was horrible. Like I thought I was gonna die. My mom thought she was gonna die. I almost didn't get to go to college. I was injured. You know, it's just, um, I just don't understand. Like what, what purpose does being reckless do other than kill people? And I've lost three really, 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 really dear friends, like really dear friends who have died because of other people. And um, I've been hit multiple times by distracted drivers or reckless drivers, you know, just road raging. I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? Seriously, you're gonna kill somebody. You know, three people killed three of my good friends. One of them was on the back of a motorcycle. The other two were in car crashes. And one of them actually ended up being filmed. Like someone just, some stranger filmed my friend being pulled, lifeless dead body being pulled from the wreckage in Washington state back in 2017. And I, I somehow, I just Googled what happened to him. And it took me to this YouTube video that it was on the freeway. And I had YouTube take it down. I was like, that is my friend that I've known since I was 13 years old. 
and he was the second person, I'm gonna cry now. He was the second person I ever met when I moved to America, when I was 13, in eighth grade. And he was the nicest guy. And still, like, kept in touch all through, like, all of my life issues and family stuff and, you know, life milestones and just, you know, remained a really good friend and then was killed. Just, he got hit by a reckless truck driver who T-boned him on the freeway and caused him to spin around and hit, and hit the back of a flatbed truck. But I had YouTube take the video down. I said, that is my friend. And that video should not be up there of him being pulled from the wreckage. Anyway, I don't understand why people need to road rage and race to a red light. I mean, where are you going? What is so important? Some asshole convention you relate for? <laughs> like, why do you have to do this? I'm, I have a 70 foot stopping distance on my van. If I slam my brakes on, I will keep going into the back of your car. And if you brake check me and I have a dash cam, okay, I have a dash cam on my van. If you brake check me, you are the one that is wrong. And trust me, I have a good insurance company. So I don't really want my entire van destroyed by some asshole because it's not like just my car gets destroyed. Everything in here can potentially just come flying forward if I end up slamming into the back of someone that brakes checks in front, brake checks in front of me. Anyway, that said, I'm gonna go to an automotive museum, drive safe, don't be a dick, and just, you know, people have died. Really good friends of mine have died and left their kids behind. Their kids have no dad or mom because of reckless drivers. And I've been hit, like I said, when I was 16, I, we got hit really bad. I thought I was gonna die. And I've been rear-ended, I've been T-boned, you know, just by people not paying attention and people that, and, and even just the other day, my friend's son, you know, was driving in Vegas and some road rager just slammed into the back of his car. He had stitches in the back of his head. It's like, what is your problem? Stop it. Anyway, so I'm here. I'm gonna go in there and be social <laughs> for a little bit. All right, I will chat with you guys later. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, this is cool. So you can actually get into some of the vehicles. That's super cool. This is awesome. I don't know what car that is. <laughs> this is great. This is just stumbled upon this place. Like I saw it on the freeway. I'm like, oh, I'll just stop here for a minute. So yeah, this is the Martin Auto Museum. And yeah, you're allowed to just sit in whatever cars you want. Let's go through here and look at the sports cars. Indy 500, oh, wow. Oh, this goes around, okay. <laughs> and there's some model cars in here. This is super cool. I had no idea this existed. I was like, I just want to get off the freeway because there's way too many crazy drivers. And this is awesome. Look at this. And there's me, of course, best driver in the world.
this is really really cool there's a bunch of guys that were sitting in one of the vehicles i'm like yeah you know they just kind of come over here and just hug the car because they're like well you know it's like a relationship saver i can't really buy the car i've got to support the family so i'll come over here and just hug the car that i can't own this one's a little close that is some prime parking right there <laughs> that was really close that's actually given me uh anxiety and i don't actually have anxiety okay don't park that way anyway so they have a carousel as well for the kids if the cars are not good enough you can ride a horse and then this is cute what is this one this is a street nick bandit oh that's nuts these cars from like the 50s 60s 70s were massive i mean we had a um uh, we had a Datsun, this big blue Datsun that we drove in England, and this car was humongous. Um, but anyway, okay, cool. All right, well, there's Willie Nelson driving a, uh, <laughs> I don't know, what is he driving? He's driving a big old truck over there, a Douglas dump truck. Okay, cool. So you can pretty much go in any car unless it says do not enter this car. So the DeLorean, you can't enter that one. But if you want to sit in any of these vehicles, you can. This is great. This is what a museum should be. You'd be able to sit in there and pretend you're driving. And then we got the old rickety ones here. Okay. Well, I got a little bit of air conditioning. I think I'm going to head out. That was a good uh, 45 minutes of my time walking around looking at vehicles. I love cars and I love airplanes and people that have cars and people that fly airplanes. <laughs> so, because it, that would never be me. I would never own any of these. But, you know, I've got some good friends that have some good collections. So, all right, so let's go check out the gift shop. You can also have an event here. They've got some abilities expo going on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny, like, you know, uh, these are like, I mean, I'm almost 46, right? So I remember vaguely growing up with cars in the 70s and 80s, you know, it's like, but it's just incredible. These things are huge. And of course, back then there weren't billions of cars on the road, so. You only go like, you know, 20 miles an hour. And what's funny is they don't even have seat belts. And when I was at the Ford Museum, Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, oh, they have seat belts. Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, um, they had a whole display of the only four car seats that they basically ever had. It's kind of funny. It's like, uh, yeah, because we used to just slide around on the back seat, you know, every time we were around the corner. And we never had car seats when I was growing up. All right, so let me go in here to the finish line uh, little store. I need to get a car to build. I need a hobby, like a hobby kit because my friend's gonna build his car. And oh, you got mobility scooters, this is awesome. So if you need to be, um, you know, need assistance, what a fantastic place. I need to get a t-shirt or something. This is really cool. Who knew, I just saw the sign on the freeway and decided to come over here. Okay, so let me, uh, let me see if they've got any other got airplanes, boats, and they've got pictures. They never have my name. Well, not the way I spell it. And they got little race cars. They're super cool. And then race tracks and then old beat up things like you see in Texas. All right, I'm done. I got a t-shirt and an insulated tumbler because I needed one for my tea. All right, I'm only like three miles from the Cracker Barrel. It's 5.30 p.m. It's still 80 degrees. So I'm gonna go to Ikea and go walk around for a little bit. Maybe see if I can find more organizational things for my van. I don't really, actually, no, I need a mat. I need a little mat for my, under my toilet. Um, and I'm going there and then that's about it. So yeah, just kind of killing time right now because it is way too hot to be sitting in my van at a Cracker Barrel because I won't really be able to open the door either and just kind of, you know, camp out in the parking lot. All right, first I'm getting some ice cream and then I'm gonna go walk around and just do one lap of Ikea. I actually do need a few things. I need some towels and stuff, so. Let's see. Okay. Pick up order here. I'm gonna get my free cup of tea. It's weird, you walk right into the cafe, that's strange. Okay, so let me see what they have. The food has really gone downhill here, unfortunately. Um, but I get a free tea, so let me get my tea cup. And they have the almond cake, that's really good. I'm not really that hungry, I just had two ice, little ice creams. And then they have salad and they have meatballs. I don't think anything's on sale today. They have kids' menus and they have plant balls. Oh, it is on sale. 
Maybe I'll just get some plant balls for dinner right now and then I'll go for a walk. All right, so I'm in Ikea. They don't have a lot of stuff actually. They've, everything's on sale. So these are on sale. These are just storage uh, containers. I just threw away one that kind of was on its end. <laughs> I've like ruined it too much, like moving it around. So anyway, so these are Drona like storage boxes. You just kind of put them together. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff here, unfortunately. And for a Friday night, it's empty. Um, so I'm just gonna walk around and do one more, well, continue the lap. Cause once you're, you know, in Ikea, you're committed. So I'll finish the lap and then I've had some dinner and then hopefully it's cooled down a little bit so I can go back to the van and not die. So, okay, cool. All right, well, I've got these and uh, yeah, let me continue walking. I need a few extra storage things and to replace a few things and I should be good. So it's probably a $50, you know, shopping spree right now. Not a lot of stuff I need, but I do need a bath mat of some kind to put under my toilet, uh, under the bed. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. So the toilet was leaking, but I think what happened was I was at high altitude and it wouldn't open um, because of the high altitude. And I think it just kind of, like the pressure and then it just kind of leaked because of that but it's fine it didn't leak all over the van it just leaked in the little tray that i put it in so i wiped that down and i need to put something more absorbent under it sorry tmi anyway it's hashtag van life okay so yeah let me continue on and yeah it's nice and quiet in here it's very warm though um but yeah and then i'll just keep going and uh that's it nothing else to report all right there's my haul and it's dark hopefully a little cooler very very windy out here for some reason okay so there's presents all right so let's go pack this up and sort everything out and then go over to Cracker Barrel in a little bit so I can at least hang out in this parking lot because that's what van lifers do we just chill in parking lots that you know no one knows that we're just hanging in our van for a couple hours I know people that just hang out at the mall all day like in their van because no one's going to know right if you're in your van chilling or if you're like in there shopping so anyway as long as you're not in the parking lot after the store closes I think you're fine but yeah, I'm only about three miles away from Cracker Barrel, so I'll go over there in a little bit. I'd rather be somewhere a little bit more social so that no one, you know, pays attention to me. Although, Prudence, you stick out like a sore thumb, which is good. All right, I'm tired. I had a big dinner. That was good. I was like, oh, actually, the quinoa soup was really, really good. I've not had soup since like three days ago. Good evening. I am at the good old saltine bucket, the Cracker Barrel. Yay, <laughs> which I think I've eaten at twice. Anyway, um, so let me go around the back here. We've got one camper van, that's a Metro bus, and a couple RVs. So yeah, let me figure out where I wanna park. I wanna park near the road so I can sleep. There's a big RV there. I think I've been seeing the same people over and over again. Uh, but yeah, there's this camper van. There's one over in the corner, taking up seven spaces. There's this dude over here with the paws on the outside. So I think I'm going to pull up here for now. I don't really want to park in the RV. I want to park near the road. So let me turn around over there. I'm going to park next to the guy with the bus, I think. Mm -hmm. 